Hello everyone, this is Ben from uh, GP Adventures and the Hobby Shop Dungeon. And I'm here today to answer another question from the Hobby Shop Dungeon Facebook group. And you can hear uh, I am joined today by my dogs who are eating bones in the background. So you, maybe you might uh, hear them during our conversation. Uh, so today uh, I wanted to, to answer uh, a question I think that was asked by Timothy Connolly. And the question was why advanced? Why first edition for the Hobby Shop Dungeon? And there are multiple reasons for that. Uh, the most obvious one is that uh, Arnie Gygax uh, runs the dungeon using 1st edition. So it made sense from that standpoint to describe the dungeon using 1st edition rules. Uh, that's not the only reason, right? Uh, of course, I'm, I started with Advanced, 1st edition Advanced. And that's uh, the game that's the closest to my heart in terms of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it's also the game that uh, blends or hip, uh, is the most helpful for the type of gameplay that a big dungeon like this implies. In fact, the rules of the first edition game were built organically by Gary and others playing uh, the game. All right, and. Uh, so it's no wonder that the first edition rules reflect the exploration game, the original uh, Lake Geneva type of playstyle, let, let's just say. And so advanced from that standpoint just makes sense when you want to describe a big, uh, big dungeon or uh, a series of adventure settings to explore, like we are doing with the the Dunsmere and, uh, and the Hobby Shop dungeon. Uh, also, um, first edition um, advanced is actually advanced. That is, it is the the natural evolution of the original game. So, if you want to describe something uh, that that is genuine in terms of Lake Geneva type playstyle, play uh, first edition just makes sense, right? Uh, and also by Placing, like by describing the dungeon using first edition rule, uh, ipso facto, you're placing the setting at the core of the old school revival or, uh, that's going on uh, right now in gaming. That is, uh, uh, it's actually easier for DM, I think, for DMs out there, to ignore information in a module rather than add it onto it, right? So uh, if you're using basic expert or you're using the original original game, uh, then it just makes sense uh, to describe things using first edition and you as a DM, you just ignore some details and maybe fix a hit dice here, a damage code there, and basically you're set, right? So uh, it's at the core of the nexus of TSR type editions of the game, right? Uh, also, uh, another thing I wanted to say uh, is that, well, it's just a fun game to play. And I mean, uh, I, really, we see a lot of fights online about, you know, like uh, which edition is better, or blah, blah, blah. I think, personally, I see the editions of Dungeons & Dragons as, as kind of uh, the different blades of a Swiss Army knife. Uh, so that would make Gary laugh, you know, because of the Swiss Army, right? But, uh, yeah, basically, each, each blade on the Swiss Army knife has a, a, has a use, a, sp a specific use, right? And editions of D&D pretty much work like this as, as well, to me, right? In that each edition does something really well and other things not so well. Like uh, the first edition game for me, it's really good for the old school exploration dungeon crawling game, right? Uh, if I was doing say, uh, really detailed uh, uh, small pieces, tactical miniatures and all that, then yeah, I would seriously think about using say, fourth edition, right? Uh, if I was doing stuff with, 
wanted the rules to reflect a lot of the organizations of the world and I really wanted to have abilities pinned down in the rules and all that, sword edition would make sense and so on and so forth, right? And, but my point really is that advanced didn't become obsolete suddenly because there were new editions of the game. It's still its own specific uh, game that is super fun to play. And it, it's one of uh, the things we want to do. We don't need to, like, to bring back the game. Like uh, It never left. But I mean, at least help people discover the game, right? And we can each do our little parts to invite people to, to try it out, right? Of course, the Hobby Shop Dungeon will have uh, conversions, you know, like... Uh, uh, there are uh, conversions for uh, Hackmaster, Astonishing Swordsman, blah, blah, blah. And uh, there's also, uh, th there are uh, uh, conversions in the work uh, for 3rd edition and 5th edition, right? Uh, but yeah, I, th I think that people, if people want to use the Hobby Shop Dungeon using 5th edition rules, fine, it's going to work totally fine, right? And if, uh, you know, playing the game, this, they suddenly think, hey, you know what? I had a lot of fun using 5th edition. And I wonder if how that would play with 1st, right? And it would play slightly differently. And maybe that wouldn't be as fun for this or that person. But maybe that could be more fun for this or that person. Or just plain different. And both are great, right? So, but you can only find out by experimenting. And... The Hobby Shot Dungeon gives you right away uh, the, the the tools to experiment by playing with different games, uh, mixing and mashing uh, uh, genres and uh, and whatnot, right? In your game, and yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, so I started with the uh, first edition. Uh, uh, Arnie has used uh, AD and the for edges and uh, that's just the, the game he, he likes and wants to to play and uh, to write for and it's just the great game at the center of the osr and uh, and i just think that uh, yeah it deserves to uh, to 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 be used because yeah it, ju it just was great with the setting as well here we are so uh, rather than rambling now uh I think this is it, and I hope that Timothy Colani, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I hope that's an, that answers it. If uh, you have uh, any comment or additional questions, uh, anyone, uh, please let me know in the comments, and uh, talk to you later. Bye bye.